So basically, dementia is decreased cognitive ability and decreased memory with full intact consciousness. So basically, the patient doesn't know what you're saying, he cannot understand you well, he forgets things a lot, but he's fully aware of what's going around him. In, all, in almost all types of dementia, there is widespread cortical atrophy with narrow gyri and wide sulci. First, we're going to talk about Alzheimer's disease. Um, in Alzheimer's disease, if we have a patient with Alzheimer's and we take a brain biopsy of them and we put it under, light, under the light microscope and we look at it, we're going to see two main features. And th these are senile plaques, which are formed by beta amyloids. And we're also going to see tau proteins, which is basically neurofibrillary tangles. So senile plaques, which is the beta amyloids, is a natural protein found in the brain. But this protein is usually cleaved by, cert by certain enzymes and removed from the brain. Now, when this enzyme is not working or, or when these proteins are produced by more amounts, they will tend to form together and form a big protein structure. This is called beta amyloid. Beta amyloid is toxic for the neurons and will cause neuronal damage. And it's also toxic for vessels in the, in the brain and will cause brain hemorrhage. Now, the tau protein is basically a neuron itself that have died and tangled upon itself to form a shape that we call a tangled or neurofibrillary tangle. We see more cases of Alzheimer's in elderly, in patients with Down syndrome, in patients with ApoE4, or amyloid precursor protein, or presenilin, either one or two. So all these factors predispose Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease seems to be protected by ApoE2. Alzheimer's patients have less acetylcholine neurotransmitter. Next, we have frontotemporal dementia. And as we know, the frontal area or the frontal lobe is responsible for personality and behavior. So the patient is going to have decrease or change in personality and behavior. And the frontal lobe also has the primary speech center. So he's going to have primary progressive aphasia. Under the microscope, we're going to see pick bodies. We're going to see ubiquinated proteins and tau bodies. Actually, frontotemporal dementia used to be called PIC disease because it has PIC bodies. And it's strongly associated with movement disorders like amyotrophic lateral sclerosis and Parkinsonism. And we have Lewy body dementia. The course for Lewy body dementia is basically dementia followed by hallucination followed by Parkinsonism. And it's actually the only type of dementia that can cause hallucination in this course. So if you see hallucination, just think Lewy body dementia. Under the microscope, we're going to see Lewy bodies from the name. And they are intracellular alpha synuclein proteins. We also see these proteins in Parkinson's disease. And we have vascular dementia, which is basically recurrent small infarcts here and there in the brain that can cause dementia with time, because the main problem is actually cortical atrophy. So if we have multiple multiple vascular problems, that's going to cause cortical atrophy, it's going to cause dementia. Next, we have creutzfeldt jakob dementia, which is caused by prions. And it's going to cause rapid progressive dementia. And it's going to cause something we call spongiform cortex. Basically, there are going to be holes inside the cortex, and the brain doesn't have time to fill these holes with cysts or fluid material because of how progressive and how rapid the disease is. And there will also be myoclonus. Other causes for dementia are syphilis, HIV, hypothyroidism, vitamin deficiencies, Wilson disease, and normal pressure hydrocephalus, which is reversible. Alright guys, so that's everything I've got today for dementias and uh, hopefully I made things easier for you and see you guys in later videos.